When you first go into Christchurch, you're aware that this is a huge college. It's so big, in fact, that little Corpus Christi next door could be put down inside the main quadrangle and we'd still have room to spare. But not everything that you see was built once Cardinal Wolsey founded it in 1525. Throughout the years, Christchurch has changed and altered, rebuilt and remodelled its buildings so that what we have on the site is now a collection of buildings dating from the 11th century right the way through to the 20th, even being remodelled into the 21st. In 1525, in the January, Cardinal Wolsey began the building of his grand and imposing contribution to Oxford architecture. It was to be an immense foundation to follow and communicate the new humanist teachings that had already been adopted by Magdalen and Corpus Christi colleges. The main quadrangle was going to be 264 feet square. There was going to be a new dining hall to be the largest in Oxford and a new chapel that was to rival King's College, Cambridge. What Cardinal Wolsey was doing was nothing particularly new. It was just the apotheosis of centuries of college development over the years. The grandest, the greatest, the biggest. Cardinal Wolsey was no fool. He knew that an army, whether an academic one or a military one, marched on its stomach. And the first building that he made sure was completed was the kitchen. He started it in January 1525 and it was ready for dinner just two years later, Christmas dinner, in 1526. As you can see, it's an immense room. It's a 40-foot cube. The ceiling's incredibly high so that any smoke and heat would actually float out through the louvre at the top. There was pastry houses, fish houses, slaughter houses, larders, all the things that you would expect for a large catering establishment. 180 people had to be fed in the very early days, right the way through, three meals a day. Nobody knows for certain exactly where they ate that Christmas dinner in 1526 that had been prepared in the kitchen. But this dining hall we know was finished in 1528. Its decoration quite splendid. All the symbols around the side are Wolsey's own personal emblems. But Wolsey fell from grace in 1529. His great plan completely unfinished. The chapel was barely out of the ground. Only the dining hall, the kitchen and three sides of the quadrangle were actually finished and he hadn't provided any of the things you would expect a man who was both interested in education and an expert administrator to have provided, like an archive or a library. It was refounded in 1546 as Christchurch, but it took until the 18th century before this magnificent library was built to finish what would have been Wolsey's complete plan. Christchurch's extraordinary dual foundation is reflected in the two portraits at the end of the hall. Immediately behind the Dean's chair is the splendid King Henry VIII, and on his left, Cardinal Thomas Wolsey. When he refounded Cardinal Wolsey's foundation as Christchurch, he decided he was going to create something new and very exciting, a joint cathedral and college institution. And that's what we have today, which is why the Cathedral for the Diocese of Oxford also functions as a college chapel. But what people see today, the great iconic buildings like the Meadows Building that you walk in through when you come to visit Christchurch as a tourist, or Tom Tower, which is perhaps one of the most famous, were not built until much, much later. Tom Tower was designed by Christopher Wren in the 1680s, but it still rings out in that iconic way 101 times at five past nine every evening to represent the original foundation of Cardinal College. Although Christchurch no longer bears the name of its original founder, it's still Wolsey's legacy that we remember. He's our great benefactor, and we can see all round the college buildings, even on the clothes that the scouts and the porters wear, on the college stationery, it's Wolsey's badge and Wolsey's cardinal's hat that we actually remember and know today as the symbols of Christchurch. Mm -hmm.